Good afternoon, everyone. It's Eric from African Art Talks with Eric, and I'm so happy to come your way this afternoon. This afternoon is going to be awesome because I've got not one, but two artists coming your way, and I'm so happy that you are able to join me this afternoon. What I ask you of you is share the link, make sure that it reaches far and wide, invite all your friends to join us. So what I'm going to do is play the music again, and I'll allow you time to share this link. So you're welcome to the show. Afternoon, everyone. So as I said, today I've got two people that I'm going to interview, two very good friends of mine, artists from Ghana, but living in the UK. So I'm looking forward to this interview, but do me a favor, share. I'm going to also share. So I'm going to share to my page right now, but do me a favor and also share to your timeline and invite a lot more friends to come and join. There's also a feature that you can actually host a host party, a watch party. So do me a favor and host a watch party, and also you can actually comment during this live show. So I'd like all of you to ask my friend questions to do with art in general, and then African art to be specific. So as you know, this show is all about African art talks with me, Eric. My name is Eric Amwakwa Bwadu, and I'm so glad to come your way this afternoon. This is our sixth episode. Last week, I wasn't here because I was in Barcelona celebrating my wedding anniversary. So it was a good break away from here, but I couldn't wait to come your way with another episode. So I'm so happy to come your way. And as we usually do, we talk about African art. Say hi, hello to me in the comments. I'll paste it in there so that people will know that you've joined the show and you are enjoying the show. So let me see who has joined us now on Facebook. And I'm going to mention your name right now. I'm going to mention your name. And I will say hello to every one of you who's joined as well. But do me a favor back and say hello to me. And I will say hello to you back. So a few people have joined right now. I just want to see you say hello to me right now. In the meantime, as we normally do, we educate. We inspire. We talk about African art in a very positive manner. And that is why we are here. And I bring friends from the diaspora or from Africa who are artists, to be precise, to talk about their work, their process, and what they actually go through to give you that be beautiful piece that you see every single day. Without much ado, we're just going to talk about a bit of the Edinkra symbols, which I've been talking about every single day. So these are symbols that were created by uh, a Ken in Ghana, the, from the Akan tribe of Ghana. His name is Ken uh, German from the Bono region, Ken Nana Kojo Ajman Edinkra, from 1810 to 1820, who was the king of the Bono region, 
And he designed these together with artists in those days, and they have become something prominent around the whole world that people use. I'm going to pick up one of them, one of them called Asasi Yedru, Asasi Yedru. And in English, it's divinity of Mother Earth. So Asasi Yedru means the Earth has no weight. Now, it's a symbol that represents power, it represents providence, and it represents divinity. You know that this symbol is one of the Dikra symbols that depicts the important concepts created by the Akan people of Ghana, and it emphasizes the importance of Earth and its preservation. So as we well know, we all need to do our part. We all need to take care of this Mother Earth that we are in. Asasi Yedru is something that really focuses on this. Asasi Yedru is the name. Now it shows that the Earth is powerful and we as human beings must take care of this Earth. Now, there's another proverb that says, Tumini na ye ene asase. It means all power emanates from the earth. All power emanates from the earth. It means the earth plays a very important role in our lives as human beings. The earth is heavier than the sea. And it's another one. Asasi ye dru sing epo. It means the earth is heavier than the sea. All these are proverbs from the Akan um, region of Ghana. And it talks about the importance of of the earth now the african barrier grounds also honor the earth because at the end of the day we are all born into the world but naturally when we die we are all buried in the earth so this shows the importance of asasi yedru importance of asasi which means earth asasi means earth so we've learned something this afternoon and that is to say that the earth is such an important element it's such a big force that we have to respect and take care of. This is what we are learning from the Akan people of Ghana. So if you have joined, say hello, and I'll say hello back. And Elizabeth Mensa says that she's watching from Ghana, and she says hello to us. So Elizabeth, hello to you as well. Thank you for your comment right now. Without much ado, I said I had two very important guests of mine very important guest of mine, who are from Ghana, but live in the UK. Now, the first guest is called Richard Mensa, very good friend of mine. And the second guest is Shoman Kwashi, somebody that I've been following for a long time on Facebook since 2010. I think he never even knew that I was following him. But I admired his work so much. I was following him on Facebook all this while. And my friend Richard introduced us physically. So we have come together to form something like a coalition of artists living in the UK, and we are doing wondrously well. So without much ado, I'm just going to bring them on screen, and they will say hello to you as well. So Richard and Shulman, how are you doing? Bro, it's good to see all of you on screen this yeah, we're afternoon. Doing okay. How are you doing? We're doing very fine. I am great, fine here. Great. So Shulman, how is it going down your end as well? Hello, hello. I think we can hear you. We can hear you. I think you're, yes, we can hear you now. So, showman's screen is breaking up a little bit, but we can still hear you, so you can speak. Showman, can you hear us? Okay, so Shoman's screen has frozen, but we will talk to Richard while Shoman uh, sorts it out. And when he comes back, we'll also talk about uh, Shoman's work as well. But today, we, as we said, are going to talk about art. And we are all artists together. We are all in the same group trying to do something to raise the image of African art. So, Richard, how has it been? How has your week been? Tell us a bit about how it's been. And then we'll delve back into who you are as a person. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you very much, um, Senior Eric, for um, bringing me to your show. I think my week has been really good. Very, very busy as well. Uh, so, no time to spare. So I'm just um, going to explain been, something here. When you hear Richard say senior, we all went to the same secondary school, Premper College. And in Premper College, we call each other senior. So I also call him senior. 
if you hear him say senior, not that I'm older than him or anything. It's a, a, term, a term that we use, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is. And I think um, every amount for uh, around the world will know that. <laughs> Yes, um, every amount, um, um, you know, like amount for like one or that, and and that is great. So my week has been very wonderful and busy. I see being busy as being very very good. That's um, right. Um, like you know, everything has gone very very well, and uh, you know, I'm really excited and happy to be um, on this show. Great, great. So we've got Shawman back. Shawman, how you doing? Can you hear us? Can you hear Shawman? I've just been breaking right. away for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, you've just been breaking away. Um, That's all right then. That's yeah. the UK weather for you. But we, we can we can hear you. So if you can um <laughs> tell us how you've been uh, this week and then we'll carry on okay. with the interview as we planned. Okay, he's breaking away, but that's okay. So basically, um, I, I brought you to the show so that we can showcase. Yes, we can hear you a bit. Can you hear us? I'll, I'll then jump back to you. All right. <laughs> if you can just log off and log back in, that, that will be great. Yeah. Okay, great. So whilst um, we wait for Shulman to join in, we'll just carry on talking about Richard's piece of artworks. Um, did you always grow up knowing that you were an artist or did you pick it up along the way? How did your art career um, start? Yeah, I think um, I, 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 I've, I've always um, drawn, sketch, painted, done everything else since childhood. Oh. <laughs> so, I would usually call myself a born artist. Right. I'm a self taught like artist. I refer to people that pick up arts I'm like in a way. I'm not a trained artist. Um, I've not been educated like in, in, you know, I'm like in that trained to paint or like anything like that. All okay. that I'm aware of is that I've always done this since childhood. So it's, it's, it's something that like I've done. Um, I was, um, if I can put it this way, uh, something that I was born with. It's very, it's very similar to myself in the sense that um, I've always been painting. I've always been an artist since since I realized that I was in this world. Um, from the age of six, I was drawing my, yeah. my friends at primary school. I was just doing sketches and all that. Yeah. So I've always been in this art space, yeah. if I can put it. So, Shulman, it's good that yeah. you've joined us back. Um, how are you doing? Uh, connection problems still there, but Hooray. Uh, I think, no, no, we can hear you perfectly fine now. It's perfectly fine. Okay, you are breaking. Good. Your voice is breaking a bit, but yeah, we can. Uh, uh, <clears throat> we can still continue a bit. On, we can on still continue. Better, hopefully. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I was asking that uh, Richard, and I'll throw the same question to you. Have you always been an artist? Did you? always know that you were an artist or did you start halfway along the way uh, as far as i can remember i've always been an artist it's been a it's been an internal struggle if i should call it if i should say it that way uh, okay in terms of uh, um you know when you realize when you realize that you are different from you are your friends there's something yes. different about you so something you like that they probably don't have that they don't have uh, they don't even know what is pushing you to uh, uh to 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 go the path you've taken yes as an so uh, what i wanted to say is that i realized i was an artist and when i was a child I uh, I used to find myself drawing even in class when people are and, and okay. um and that, and that passion continued, but there was this there, there used to be this doubt that 
there used to be this doubt that is it gonna is it something that you do for the rest of your life? Yeah. Or uh, is it gonna make you money? No. Oh, and your parents come in as well to uh, to uh, not discourage you. Uh, try and um, encourage you. And another part that they think is 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 worth it. Yes. Understand. Can you hear me? I'm, I'm breaking we can hear you. You're breaking up a little bit, but we can make up what you're saying. Can you can you still hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, yeah. We can hear you, but you're breaking up a little bit. So I think um, it may have something to do with okay. your connection. Um, um, look at your broadband connection and um, see. Great. So... Basically, uh, Richard was telling us that okay, he I'll, has uh, always. Let me get on. <laughs> not a not a problem at all. Not a problem. So Richard was saying that he's always been an artist. Um, he was drawing at an early age, drawing the friends and all that, but has had an internal struggle, as we all do, where our parents mm -hmm. uh, direct us towards traditional subjects like maths, like engineering, like science. Uh, biology, chemistry, physics, and all that, or being a lawyer or an engineer and all that. So, yeah. Rich, I'm not sure whether you face the same challenge because surely I did. You know, when you're growing up and you're <laughs> picking up pencils to draw and paint around the house, I remember yeah. one day my father was like, you know, be serious in life, be serious. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, 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 it's exactly the same here. Um, that is why I ended up being a chemical engineer and now working as an environmental scientist um there you go from childhood you know like as i said i've always sketch painted did everything but i was also good in science and math as well so um there was this you know struggle i really i knew that i wanted to do that parents really was and it's not, no you cannot you cannot be an artist because no one in ghana makes money from art that cannot be like a career yeah. <laughs> so yeah. but yeah. um Again, teachers from primary school would also say that, no, 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 you're too good in math or science, so you cannot be an artist. An um, artist? I was pushed like in that direction to, uh, like into science and did science and did chemical, um, like engineering, and came to the UK, did environmental pollution and control. I still like working with like environmental, but by doing um, a lot of art um, as well. So. It is. It has been like a journey, and I, and I think that, um, my story wouldn't be like a unique. Um, as Salman, like was saying that he faced exactly the same um, like issue. You know, um, I, I wouldn't even call it um, like issue. You know, like he faced it's exactly the same it's not a challenge to um, overcome, in isn't Ghana, it? and like yes, and like you yourself also face exactly the same as well. So it's been, um, I would say it's been a fun journey now that i am doing more arts because i never thought i would do arts and more or less make it more or, or consider even it as a career and it's yeah. been it's been it's been really really good that's great that's great so showman the question was um did you face any challenges as you were growing up as you said it has been kind of like a struggle isn't it um growing up because the perception in ghana is that Artists do not make money. Art is not a good profession to get into. And they normally encourage us to go into the traditional uh, professions like being a doctor, being a lawyer, being a scientist. You know, all of these are an engineer. These are the traditional subjects that they encourage us to go into. Did you face the same challenge as well? Um, yes. <laughs> is, is, is the question directed to me or Shaman? Is it me? To Shaman. To Shaman. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Shaman, can you hear us? I think Shaman has disappeared again. <laughs> right. So what I might have to do is probably call Shaman on the phone mm. and then we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So let me try and get Shaman on the phone. That's technology and um, live transmission and now it happens. Mm. So I will try and get Shaman. Yeah. Or when Shaman comes, I'll remove you off screen and see how how that happens okay yeah so we'll, we'll carry on yeah, with that. that is absolutely um, fine as well yes yes mm -hmm. yes yes so 
my wife has joined in and Marie is saying, hey, all of you need to take these brains and skills to Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know when you say you're a chemical engineer. I'm also sitting here, a mechanical engineer, yeah. and we are all artists as well. Yeah. You know, we've got a brain that we're yeah. using to serve uh, the diaspora. And Shellman is also yeah. a good yeah. artist. He's also studying. What did he say he was studying right now? He's studying um, into um, software. Yeah, so, so, software, IT something. Software, isn't it? IT software, yeah, software yes, development. Right. Software development. So with all these. Yeah. Is it because in our childhood we were, I wouldn't say brainwashed, but we were directed towards a certain path that if you are an artist, you wouldn't amount to anything or you wouldn't get money or the status in society. Is that why it's forcing us to study all these secondary subjects? Yes, I think um, that is exactly the point that in Ghana, um, you know, like when I was growing up, I don't think there was any um artist in ghana who was you know more or less like a role model for yes. um any parent to encourage their children to follow their artist you know That's i think true. every successful person who has made um a career or made like a lot of money that is so like people would say in ghana you you know will be an engineer doctor um yes. a lawyer or like the traditional um careers that like we all know so i think there wasn't any one artist that I could mention, you know, growing up. And I, I, I really wouldn't um, um, say even um, um, blame those around us, like a time who encouraged us to pursue um, engineering and science and go into in like different like direction. Because I think if I found myself in the same situation um, as a parent at the time, and, and I realized that, my son is really going to um is interested in something that i really haven't seen anyone uh, made a career of i would be concerned and i i, I would have probably maybe um give it some advice that um uh, do the traditional one and say by it and um find yourself some something that would make you uh, like more money so i don't, I don't really think i think it's it's um uh, the, the lack of role models like at the time for the people um in our parents uh, encouraging us. I wouldn't say even uh, parents, I would say the community because it was parents, it was teachers, it was everyone like around us encouraging yeah. us to go in certain directions. So it's, it's, um, I, I, it's, it's not something that it was, like they had like a choice. I think they, it was like well intended like for us to- It was well intended. Career. It was well intended. So I'll go back to Shellman now, now that Shellman is back. Shellman, we're talking about the challenges that we faced as young people uh, in, in think, Ghana. Uh, yeah. The audio is gone. Is it gone? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, we can hear you, can you hear uh, Shellman. Can you also hear me? Yeah. I Great. can hear okay. Shellman. I cannot hear Senior Eric. All right. We will try that later. Let me see. I will take you off screen and get Shellman to speak, and, and we'll see how it goes. So, Shaman, uh, if you can hear me, just tell us about your childhood and the challenges that you faced as an artist, uh, so, just so we identify with what's going on. Yeah, again, um, I caught part of the conversation you were having with uh, brother, er, uh, brother Rich. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a similar situation. Um, mm. Again, role models were not there, but um, for me, after after A levels, I discovered a few role models. Okay. Uh, Bloody Blad Glover, Setoji, Wiz. Okay. And the Wiz, yeah, I discovered this artist in, in Ghana because I was keen yeah. to find who was the profession. So then I met, I met, finally got to uh, properly meet Wiz. Wiz is like an uncle to me. That's right. And um, he taught me a lot. And, and, um, and um, he has so much influence on me that that even my work, if you look at my work, my work, you, you can the influence he had, he had, and so and then now after that it was a quest to break away to discover other arts. But then okay. in Ghana itself, we do exactly we still don't have a lot. Of <laughs> in Ghana itself, we still don't have a lot of artists to. to 
to look up to in terms of, of uh, um, the Can you hear us? Okay. Understand? Yeah. My parents were concerned. My parents were concerned um, about me living my life as an artist. Okay. Because um, it's a uh, it's a profession that um, it's a profession that is uh, it, it, you know when when you're growing up, you go in now your parents want you to do a, a nine to five job and they want you to uh, to work probably for the group. Um, for the government, get paid monthly, to, uh, you know. So uh, for you to follow a path that that is kind of unknown, yeah, scares scares everyone around you. Understand? Hello. That's very true. Yeah. That is very true. That's very true. Hello. That's very true. So I can hear you, and um, what you've said is very very true. I also went through the same phase. And I was telling Richard earlier on. Can you hear me? That basically, yes, exactly. there are challenges we face as African artists, but we've learned to overcome them. We've learned to overcome them right now. Richard, can, can you hear me? Richard, can you hear me? Okay, so I don't think Richard is hearing us, but uh, can you hear Shulman? Right. So I'll minimize Richard and then we'll carry on. Shulman, can you hear me? So there's a challenge with our internet here, but if anybody can hear me, let me talk about it. We are going to go straight into the artworks Hello. of Shulman and Richard so that you get to know what they actually do. We'll talk about their processes and what they, uh, they go through to produce these beautiful works. But Shulman was saying that he had influences and right after a levels he found can i say mentors per se can i say that they were your mentors can you hear me Okay, so what I'm going to do is change the audio on here. No audio. Someone, I, I can hear you. I can hear, uh, I, I cannot hear Sini Eric. Um, still have right, so can you hear me now? Can you all hear me? Okay, I'm going to change. Can you hear me? Can you, can you hear me? I can hear you. I cannot hear Sineric. Okay, Shulman, can you hear me? Great. If you can hear me, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Those watching us, if you can hear me, let yeah, me know. And carry on with the show. Okay. Technical hitch again. Um, okay. Great. So the guest is they can, and we'll just carry on. Um, if you can all yeah. hear me, we'll just carry on with the show. Um, basically, I'm going to delve into each of your artworks, and I will talk a bit about it, yeah. so that we know what you produce. And Tell us what inspires you, the process that you actually go through. So I'll be starting with Richard, and I'll show Richard's first two pieces of artworks that he produces. So basically, these are beautiful, very detailed artworks that Richard, you've got here. Do you want to talk us through your process? What inspired you? What's the message you're trying to tell the world? Um, thank you very much for the question again. I think um the inspiration behind these two pieces is um first of all is to empower um the black man or african especially like our women 
And the second one, again, is to um, tell like our story. That is um, um, like our story from our own perspective. So like, if you look at the first painting, the first painting um, is called Phyllis. Um, you know, an African woman with um, a lioness and some books and a very, very detailed African fabric and behind. It is just a combination of what we stand for as Africans. The lion, like uh, the lioness, like symbolizes, um, you know, the courage, the boldness of the African, like woman, and the books yeah. symbolizes her power and like knowledge. Um, my process, I think, it's very, very simple. Um, again, um, I, I, you know, as I said, I'm not a very trained artist, so I don't really use technical terms. I, I, I tend okay. to go for very, very, very simple and basic terms here. I use what is um, normally like referred to as glazing and like process, which is um, from, um, like using very, very thin layers of things um, uh, like on top of each other um, yeah. to get the textures right and to get the, uh, like the details um, like coming out. Um, so that is, that is, that is um, like my process for all my work. So it's the glazing process. I use um, oil painting quite a lot um for my works so on the second painting which like you can see on the screen that is um the lady with the black um up uh like the yes. like first up that is the black power uh like salute that one is telling the story of um the wind rush um um, um you know I, I don't know whether to call it like scandal um in the yeah. uties so in the uh, in the in the in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, I believe, um, many blacks within or many people within the Commonwealth were invited. They were British citizens. Um, I like you know during the time they were invited by the motherland, which is the UK, to come yeah. here to help build the, like the country after the Second World War. So we had a lot of people from the Caribbean, Africa, and many of the Commonwealth countries like coming here. And um, these people came here as British nationals, not, you know, um, to live in England or to live within the UK. That's true. Um, the Immigration Act came and um, at some point, um, they, like they were supposed to like register to get, you know, how to validate their nationality. A lot of them, because they came here as British nationals, they didn't take the opportunity like to do that. And um, um, quite not like, just like recently, um, I think, Successive like governments, um, but possibly maybe in the it's been going on for quite a while. Um, have uh, like I've been deporting them, um, treating them very, very like unfairly back to you know, um, Africa and the Caribbean. Um, so this painting symbolizes, um, like the lady that you see there symbolizes the spirit of those that came here. Uh, okay. she has gone through quite a lot. Um, going through a lot of hells were put in a way, but she has been very successful, gone through it, yeah. come out victorious. That is why she's got her first up. And she's been saluted by the Queen's um, guard. And um, that is wow. somebody I see them, you know, like standing there. And the ship that you see there is the Windrush, um, the Empire uh, Windrush um, ship. That the ship that brought a lot them. of this um, yeah, to like the UK. So you could see in the background the, when they were coming into the UK in black and white and the lady emerging victorious that even yeah. for everything that she's gone through, she still um, thrive within the system. And now she's going into the future with full security. That is why you see the dogs, the two dogs represent the security uh, that <laughs> she like, represents. The African fabric within in there is, is, is just like to... Um, symbolize, you know, it was, I was just looking for something to just represent Africa and the black people. And I told that um, to have the African textile there is um, uh, like really good. So they came into the UK um, on the Empire, um, like uh, Empire, like Windrush ship. They had hurdles yeah. and put in their way. And now, you know, even though, we, you know, a lot of them are still uh, facing challenges, um, this is um, like uh, looking into the future that, um, you know, we will thrive, we will succeed, and we will go into the future, um, you know, with all the confidence 
that um, um, uh, like we can as um, uh, like a people. So that's that is that is the message behind these two paintings. Now that that's amazing. That is really amazing. And um, I'm going to bring Shawman back onto the screen because we need to hear from Shawman as well. Uh, Shawman has been doing some brilliant paintings. So Shawman, how are you doing? I'm going to put one of your paintings on screen so that people will know what you do as well. Um, the first one is this one. As you can see, Shawman, do you do you normally paint in acrylic or oil? My connection is still not very good. That's um, okay. We can hear you. So, so you can. Paint. So, do you paint in acrylic or oils? Okay, if I heard you right, you want me to talk about my art? Is that right? Yes. Yes. So, so I've shown I've shown this one on screen. If you can tell us a bit about um, your, your, okay. your painting. Um, yeah, I mostly like to, uh, in my work, I like to show um, uh, emotions, in my emotions of our people. And, okay. Um, this painting reminded me, um, the idea of this painting was growing up, got to a time when um, when, when uh, mom have to go a lot to to even feed us. So right. uh, there's this um, in, in the morning it's like it's, it's like uh, going to going to another day is a miracle. Understand? Yes. So um, yes. So uh, um, all those memories passed still 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 out in my mind and I remember Sometimes when mom when mommy wakes up and you go into the and I go into the room to look for her, she yeah. she'll be sitting on the bed in that in that pos in that position. And I'll I'll, yes. I'll 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 go I'll go on and ask what the problem is. But he obviously he obviously always wanna keep us happy, but really the thought going through her mind is, is the how would I carry on? He had no right. job. Daddy passed away when I was um, when I was right when I was when I was uh, when I was eighteen. So uh, I decided to jump together. I, I, um, as I, I, uh, growing up, remembering all these um, all these uh, hardship that we went through. So this painting yeah. I call bitter memories. So 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 this painting depicts a black woman. A black woman who is sitting on, on the edge of his, her bed and wondering and thinking how she can make it through another day. That's true. That's true. I mean, a lot of yeah, I would that, say that was the idea uh, behind our uh, African mothers go through this that you're talking about, and um, it, 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 it relates a lot to us. This is this painting is very um, relatable to a lot of the pain that our mothers go through to make sure that there's food on the table for us to eat. And I think, Shalman, Sh Shalman, you can bear witness to this one. I'm still, uh, yeah, it's, um, I'm still it's breaking up, I know, I know. Yeah. What I'll do, let me call you on phone as well. Away, yeah? I don't know why, but. <laughs> let me call you on phone, and then you can at least hear me speak on, on, on phone. Let's see how that goes. So I'm calling you right now. So can you hear me? Good, good. Shaman can hear me. Um, so basically, I was saying that, yes, this is very relatable in terms of how we grew up in Africa. And our moms, our moms had to fend for us and um, make sure that we had food on the table, same as our dads. But, you know, our moms think emotionally through their children's welfare. And so that makes a lot of sense in your painting. Um, I'm going to put it back up again for those of you who didn't hear Shaman speak, for him to just talk about the technique, because I can see that you have really captured an emotional state of mind on, on, on screen. If you can see it on screen, if you can talk us through the colors, the technique, um, without obviously really revealing all your secrets, but it's, it, it captures an emotion. There's a bit of... Um, 
it's like dawn. I'll leave you to explain the painting itself. Yeah. So I did. Sorry. So as I said, the, um, um, before I choose my colors, I I always always I don't really follow color theory. Okay. But what I do is just I use the colors I feel for, and for me, this painting when I was doing it, it reminded me of um, of, of of the. Um, the African, uh, the colors you see around us in Africa. Yes. Yeah. My, my house growing up, it, it wasn't, it wasn't um, all concrete all around. So you have this dust coming up. That's right. Understand? So um, even though this was supposed to be like um, an early morning scene, well, all I could do is to do was use a bit of cool colors to represent that. But yes. I ended up again going warm as Africa is. Yes. But but the heat of those colors out. So there's a conflict between the colors and when the mood of the lady. That's true. That is very yes. true. So yeah, so it's um it's just the way I felt about applying the colors, even though uh, I should have gone for cooler colors. And I think so, you, you, you've you captured it really well because I think the warm colors give us a bit of hope at the end of the day, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Because um, because we all made it true at the end of the day. Yes. We all made it true at the end of the day. So, so there is that warmth, even, even there's that warmth that um, I use in the colors. And that's the only chance I have to uh, represent hope in the painting. That's Even right. Even though the woman is on the on, on the other side yes. of, uh, <laughs> of, of, of of the emotional roller coaster, I should say. Very well again, represented. Again, it's just, it's just the thing that my colleagues have to say to my wife. I, I, I just, I don't want to stop it. Okay. Yes. True. Right. Right. Enjoying the Okay. Yes. Right. It's amazing. I mean, the outcome speaks for itself. We can all see the brilliant results that you get. I'm going to bring Richard back on, and we're going to flip between each other's way of working. And I can see that there are differences in the way that we work. Um, but I'm going to bring one more. If you can turn back your camera on, um, that would be great, Shalman. And then we can just discuss. If you turn your camera back on, we'll just discuss. But I'm going to go back to Richard's painting. And Richard, this one is to do with portraiture. Um, you've got, you can tell us through both of them. And there's a theme that's running in the background that I'd like you to talk about as well. Yeah. Um... Again, um, this one, as you rightly mentioned, is portraiture. Um, I was just, the first one is um, um, President Obama, the 44th President of the United States of America. So oh, I, was, I, was, I was looking for something, a painting that would capture um, the character of Obama. And okay. we all know that Obama is, you know, very, very, I'm jovial. He can be very, very funny as well. And um, uh, I was looking through paintings that have been done. Um, his um, like official painting that was done by Kehendi, other paintings that have been done by various like artists. But I really couldn't find any one of them, which to me captures the man as I would want to remember him because he right. was a fun person. And uh, like he would always 
see him that's smiling but most of his paintings are you know he is in a very very serious pose which i thought really didn't do him injustice it it, it, it doesn't capture that side of like obama that to me um um i like so when i painted this one i said all right let me paint something that you know would make this man very like relaxed capture okay. some of his like character capture some of his traits and like have it on the canvas the african fabric again in the um background is just um where he comes from is is, is just the uh his um his 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 roots that his dad you know um comes from um like kenya yeah. so he's got the african yeah. blood like in him as well so that is why we've got african fabric that is the connection the next portrait again is um i would say that like the next portrait was shortlisted for the jackson's um uk art prize award for 2020 so um oh. in the, uh, like portraiture um category so okay I, again um i've got it, it was just like to capture um, um like my wife you know in in a very very casual decent way um i don't for me to paint any like portrait i, I do have um like requests and uh, to paint like many portraits and i tell people that if i want to paint portraits like alone i've got about two years worth of work like to you know like <laughs> to like, non stop but there is there is there's something about portraits that to me it has to make sense it, there, yes. there has to be something quite like unique that you know like you see it and I want to paint like this thing so again that was again one it was one afternoon coming from the market um i think it was um a bit colder that's why you you, you, you could see it wearing that mark <laughs> so i decided that this is <laughs> this is the portrait that i wanted to paint and she was quite surprised that no 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 i, I want to really dress up and i said no, no i don't want you to dress up i want this one and i painted this one. Uh, this one like i said it was shortlisted for um an award and i think it was among the top 100 um artwork that was selected out of almost 6000 like entries wow um, for That's that amazing. um um award it, it, yeah like we didn't get to like the final 10 but at least you know being in the top at least the recognition recognition is, makes a huge difference was really good for me. yeah the recognition yeah, makes a huge difference yeah, yeah, yeah. so sean i'm going to show like, your next see, one I've, yeah, I've carry on. Yeah, I've been trying to incorporate the African textile. Yes, even behind you, there's a piece of work that I didn't add to the slides, but every piece of yours has got the African textile in there. And why do you do that? Is it is it is it to me as well, isn't it? Is is this question? That's to you. Why 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 do you normally include the African textile in your paintings? Yeah. Okay. I think um, the African fabric is intricate. It usually forms part of the story for me. Um, if you see uh, like some of my art, and I tell you the storyline, you can see yes. the name because, like in Africa, most of our fabric, and the print that we have in Ghana, they've got meaning and they've got names. So um, most of the names are linked to the storytelling. So, for example, okay. um, maybe like not this one, um, the one that I showed you, the like, previous one of my wife. Yes. The fabric that like you see, I think is called um, in Subra. Okay. So it is. It is. It is again going back to the story of something that is you know like natural, like water, like a world that is being given by the earth. So uh, I, I don't, I don't <laughs> so like that was like to incorporate that um, African fabric, the meaning into the painting. So most of my paintings with African fabric in the background, the fabric forms part of the story. So like if you go right. into the meaning of the fabric, the color sourcing, the symbols in them forms part of the story. They, they all form uh, part um, of the story. So I've got paintings with African, um, um like textile print on it which is um i think i uh, like we'll get to that like once like we get to okay. that you will really we'll like understand Definitely. you know like someone's story and like and 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 the meaning 
Okay, definitely. So thank you, Richard, for that one. I'm going to bring um, Shalman's one. And Shalman's paintings are vibrant. I really like the choice of colors and the aspect of Africanism, Cubism, and all that, the abstracting uh, side of it. These are powerful paintings, uh, Shalman. Can you talk us through the one on the left? Shalman, I'm going to have to call you again. Because we need we need to hear from you. Mm. Yeah. Okay, Shaman, can you hear us? Yeah. 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 Good, 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 good. So basically, the one on the left hand side is a really powerful abstract painting. I like the vibrant colors, and your use of complementary colors are, are amazing. Can you talk us through them? Um, yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. So I really don't have any proper rules to follow. I, I just I wake up and I feel like this is what um the colors the, the color colors I want to see for uh the yes. That's um, amazing. Yeah, the first one um is called facade of personality. Okay. So the whole idea about that is uh, what's going on now in terms of uh, in terms of uh, um, what people describe as beauty. Yes. Of, of our women, then, not just our women, but I think everybody else, especially I mean the, the women. So what, what's happening is that because of because of the um uh, the influence of social media. Yes. And um pressure of of uh, of looking in looking a certain way people have people we don't even know what they actually look like anymore that's right I understand so um, when you look at the lady her actual face is behind what you behind what is obvious yes the yes so the one the face that is obvious has got the long eyelashes mm -hmm. and she's sort of looking down so she so she she's just she's lost herself yes and behind that exists who she actually is. Oh. But, but we don't even know her. We don't even know her anymore. True. Basically, insecurity has come in so, so much. Yes. That that people are losing losing what um, we, especially artists, and I believe most people see as beauty. Yes. Because back in the day, if I want to do a painting, I remember when I was in school, my favorite portraits I used to draw were laid people with com uh, how do you call it? Uh, you know when Pam Pam there? Jerry 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 Kells? No, no, no. You know when they flat they just leave their hair natural. Oh okay, 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 yes, I get it. Yes. And then even when they style it, they just use um you remember that the, the thread they use in the black the black one, the black thread, yes. yes. Exactly, in flattening their hair. That's right. That is the sort of that that is sort of um uh, portraits I used to like to do that, that, that sort of natural beauty that our, our, our women uh, possess. That's it. They still possess it, but now I think, as I said, social media, the 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 ability to access information very easily. And if we don't really believe in authenticity of the African individual, we are easily swayed away to think that if you perm your hair or apply makeup or dress a certain way, westernized way, that is more presentable. But that's wrong. Exactly. exactly. So again, you can see this painting that she, she again, she's thinking she's not, she doesn't really know herself. Probably thinking of losing weight and, you know, look, Always try to try to um, fit into a certain description of beauty. Yes. And as I always say, what we know of Mona Lisa. Yes. If that that same lady was in this era, she would not even be considered beautiful. No, that's true. That's true. You see, I've changed what we consider beauty. I think it's, it's just it's just perception of people, of people what beauty should be. Definitely. And the true beauty is, is, is in works. 
is inwards. And, and that's a message that we should carry across. That beauty is within, it's not what you see outside. Exactly. So you, you've really captured it beautifully in terms of the abstract and the colors. And I wonder how you achieve these. You know, it's like pointillism. I'm not sure how you do it. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I use I use all tools. I think I I, I use brushes less. Wow. Um. So uh, most of those most of those techniques comes from palette knife from my fingers. All right. And uh, and, and and a bit of brush technique here and there. Yes. And, and sometimes to create some effects. What I do is that I just um. I, I, I take some, I think, you know, you know what we used to use, call cards. I don't know, I don't know how you remember call cards, like, um, call cards. Yes, 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 yes. Well, I, I remember, I remember back in the days when we first came to this country. Yeah. Um, yeah. We used to have all these call cards and, yeah, and we just have, to call back Africa. Home and all the rest. That's remember? it. So for those of the young ones, let me explain what call cards are. You know, uh -huh. <laughs> it's like a, a credit card sized card, a plastic card that you have numbers on it that you used to call back home in Africa. So that, that's what he's talking about. Yeah. So I used to take the old ones. Okay. Put them to different sizes. Yeah. And use them as, as, uh, as brushes. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that's how industrious we are as Africans, isn't it? Give us anything yeah. and we'll create something out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So moving on it's to the... Yeah. Definitely. The one on the right-hand side talks... Is, is more serious looking. I mean, what was the message here? Yes. Um, again, is the whole idea of what I'm the I call I, the name of the painting is called Protectors of the Throne. Okay. So, um, it's, it's, the whole idea is to show the might of Africa. Right. Even before the West came. Yeah. Before the, before the, before, before, um, the first ship came to uh, the, the coast of Africa. That's right. I believe this, this, this is what happened. When they got there, they saw these mighty guys standing and they were shaking in their, in, in, in their, in their shoes. Yes. But then, because of compromise, because of the, um, um, the nature of the African people, we accept, we tolerate. Mm. So that is how, that, that, that is, uh, brought us down, but then it's just it, it, it's, it's just the nature of of Africans. Of Africans. That's right. We can hear you. Yes. Right. Yes. Because there is no way you can break through that barrier. So they are not moving, that there's no action. Uh -huh. They just stand there. But then you can feel the strength and the power, the might of this. That's true. That's true. I mean, that's very well depicted in terms of authority and power, just looking over something, isn't it? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. They're not doing anything. They're just standing tall. But do you know, uh, uh, Shalman, this is the authority and power that we need to recognize and believe in. This is who we are. We are not violent, but we've got power and authority. And this is what we shouldn't lose the sight of. That Africans being quiet doesn't mean that we, we don't have that power to exert force if we can, if we want to. A lot of people have lost confidence in themselves because we don't know who we are. But if we can go back to the, the Shaka Zulus and the Yas and Tours, we would know that we do have strength, power, determination, wealth, everything within us. To, to exist as God created human beings. That's, that's, I don't believe in throwing what we already have. 
That's true. And, and completely accept somebody's idea. Yes. When do you know the story of what they are? That's true. Level, or you might even get better than them. Better than them. Yes. So, so for me, from now on, when the most of the things are going to be said, okay. Uh, the That's right. Shaman, can you add just your video without the mic? If you can just add the video, that would be great. Just the video without without cutting off the phone. We will just be using the phone for your volume. So basically, what you have portrayed is really powerful. And I'm going back to Richard to show some of Richard's work. But I think the message that you've given us, and this this afternoon I was having a chat with um, a Western person that we were entering into business with, and he said that I like black people a lot. And he started apologizing for calling us black. And we're like, no. Don't apologize. We are black. We should be proud to be called black people. And yeah. he said that people treated us the way they treated us back in the days because of jealousy. Jealousy of our strength, jealousy of our intellect, jealousy of the determination, how we survived in those days. And because of that jealousy, they took us as slaves back in the days. And there's a white grown man in his early 70s you know, telling us this. So that is what I want us to take away, that as black people, we are powerful in strength, in mindset and everything. We should believe in ourselves, believe in our culture, believe in our creativity to be able to move forward as a society in this world. Um, right. So, Richard, I've got one more of your paintings, actually two more that I'd like to show. The first one is that one. And um, let's carry on. So, Shalman, can you hear me? Good. Good. So your device is not connected to the same, but we're going to talk about Richard's artwork and then I'll come back to you. Okay then. So Richard, I've got two paintings of yours on screen. Both of them are conveying a message. And this is the power that artists have to be able to convey a message, a message that sends um, a message to those in authorities. So can you talk us through the two paintings and what you're trying to tell those in authority? All right. The first painting um, is um, a recent painting uh, um, that George Floyd was murdered um, right. in America by the white police. So that shows um, a first um, black power fest with yes. an American flag and some demonstrators like behind. The message wow. is very simple that um we as we as uh, like a race as people um cannot endure the brutality that is meted like to our people we're not going to stand silent like again so as yeah. artists i think um nina simone said something which was powerful the artists um are supposed to reflect the time so if you are an artist and not reflecting the time, then you don't, you're not like relevant. You're not relevant. So That's that true. painting That's that true. you see there, yeah, you're not uh, uh, like uh, uh, like relevant. Like you would have to like reflect at uh, like the times. So the um, like on your left side, uh, uh, like left side, you see um, a lady who is standing up, um, poised, okay. very calm, and two yeah. policemen uh, really. Uh, they've got all their full gear on, um, um, like arresting her, but her oh, yeah. strength, her, you know, um, like poise and everything projects um, the authority and the strength that we have as people. That is what is showing. And you see, uh, you, you can also see some protesters like behind that, which is showing that we are not going to keep quiet. Um, I like the speech that was made by our Shapton during the um, funeral ceremony for George Floyd. And, yes. you know, like, it, you know, like it made mention of the fact that we want the system to remove its knee from our neck. And that our is neck. what this painting 
is trying to yeah exactly this is what this painting is trying to say that we've had enough as a race we've had enough as people we want to breed we want opportunity to breed we want the system's knee to be taken off our you know um, neck so that we can uh we as a people can um, um like move forward as you know as you know like we want there is there is like so many things going on um, um in the background you can see blood drifting um the power um, um like salute and fire like burning as well um like in the background yeah. it's all um like the, the, the like each thing that like you can see in this um like image has got um you know it's you know like shows something or symbolizes um uh, um something the That's painting right. that you see on the right it is a personal one I think okay. it's, um, I came into the UK 2002, I believe, um, to right. pursue my master's and all that. When I came here, one thing I realized from the very beginning was that um, I was made to feel different. That is, you know, um, I felt like many people say exactly the same thing, that that was a time that I felt different in my life, that, all right, I'm a black person because I've never <laughs> seen myself or um by the color of my you know skin or define myself yes. by the color of my skin you know like living in ghana but when i came into the uk to 2002 that was and i realized that i was a black man <laughs> um, <laughs> literally you, you know and i think i was i was i was i was i was very very young um by then and i was stopped many times by right. the police which was quite like incredible um there was one experience which i think this painting forms like the basis of um okay. i was coming from the uni at the time and i came out of tottenham hill by train station and yeah. i was met by about i think 10 or 15 policemen uh oh, wow. some were holding dogs um somewhere you know and you know i think i was the only person coming out from the uh, not not only person like very very few people so yeah i was yeah. you know working with my earphones on, uh, uh, like within my ears, and I realized that two police, uh, like men, were coming towards me. So I thought mm. they were going to bypass me, and you know, um, like go their way. And those coming towards me, you know, I just went straight like through them, and I, yeah. I had I had like a tap uh, on the shoulder. So I turned around, and I was surrounded by about eight of them. And I oh, was like, all right, okay, what is my crime here? Yeah, so wow. uh, one of them just said, all right, like, we want to search you because we suspect you got drugs on you. Then what? I said, do you know what? I don't even drink or smoke. How how, yeah. how can I have, like, drugs on me? You know, like, mm -hmm. what, what is your basis? Because there were other people... Uh, Walking around as well. Of, like, the station at the time. And, like, most of them were white. I think about 90, 98% of them were white. And, and I was the only, you know, black person that was... I said, oh, wow. And I said, wow. You said I've got drugs. I said yes, and I said okay. So, so what should I do? So they pulled me aside, and when they said that about you know the numbers were increasing, I had about yes. ten policemen like on me, you know. So my bag with my books in it, my phone, everything was taken away from me, wow. and they began going through them, flipping page by page. I was quite confident that i didn't have anything on me so anything on you, you know yeah. like they were going through like everything and when um all the questions that like what this is what really made it worse for me or like confusing or yeah. really made me angry and frustrated when they stopped me for you know searching for drugs all the questions that they were asking me were about like immigration oh like where are you from what are you doing here so it's got uh, nothing to do with what they stopped you from it, yeah, like it had nothing to do with that. So they went through everything uh, and um, like made a quick search me and uh, very later. In, to cut it short, they didn't find anything. They never issued any apology. They oh. the, the manner in which I was searched was really rude. Uh, no one should go through uh, uh, like that. And I was stopped like you know many times. So, you know, I've, I've been here for um, 18 to uh, like 19 years now. I'm now like British like citizen. Not that yes. it's stopped, you know, like sometimes like it's still, you know, like I've not been stopped like uh, like recently. Maybe it's because I've got like some gray hair. 
<laughs> so, um, uh, maybe that discourages them from stopping an old man like myself. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Yes, so, yeah. Uh, like, what I feel is that um, um, stop and set is um, like you know, like like black people are um, like more likely like to be stopped. And the mm. painting, that painting is called Taking. So we've got um, our. So this one is called what Taking. What purpose? You know, that is from my experience, is to humiliate. Yeah, taking the uh, like the one uh, on on the right. Um, okay. That like you know like from my right, I can see the like for taking because if a black person with the union jack, um, you know, on their neck, meaning that he was celebrating, he was proud, you know, yes. of being Britain or being a British national. But yes. I think there are some forces. System is pulling it away that you do not belong here. We don't True. really like your kind. You know, because mm. I told her before, you know, by like a policeman that these are the kind of people that like we don't like here uh, uh, yeah. in this country. So it is called taking. It is a process like painting. Um, um, uh, let's see, it is being bought by someone like in America, which I think. Oh, okay. Um, like you know, <laughs> um, um, I, I, I wanted the painting to stay in the UK, but um, I guess someone like America bought it. The African fabric that you can see around it. Yeah, uh, like within the background, it's called um abaka. You know, if uh, like if you know, abaka is mainly means uh, like handcuff, right? Being being taken or like being in um like uh, 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 I, I I don't know like how to really like uh, like describe it like what it's like the the institution or like the government system prison yes. uh, 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 system again it it is it's showing the disproportion. Uh, like how many blacks are in the prison like system that people are stopped people are arrested black people are you know like the system is very, very quick to put black men or young black men you know um uh um in jail so that is the story that this one is um like supposed to tell you could see um mo farah as well like in the background holding the okay. like again um if you are so, you know, like me, someone who follows um athletics, uh, Mo yeah. Farah has done quite a lot for the United Kingdom, but sometimes the way that he's treated by the media, he you know he's treated unfairly by the media than his white counterpart. I think that tells the story that like that was supposed to be like a, a, a sarcastic way of you know yeah. like saying that all oh, right, okay, this is you know like the person you know like a person who. Came here very, very young, you know. Black African is achieved quite a lot for the country, but he's still being treated, you know, unfairly right. um, to um, his white, like, uh, like uh, counterpart. So, and I've got clippings of um, some like newspaper um, uh, um, article that is showing yeah. how the media often treats um, like black people. There was one. Um, which I, I don't think, uh, 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 like you can see, that is showing um, Rahim like Sterling um, okay. being treated differently from another. Um, no, uh, it was another black um, Manchester City like player who was yeah. um, the Daily Mail here was treating him differently from a white, you know, young player as well That's because true. both of them were signed, at, uh, you know, uh, uh, around the same time. The guy bought like a house. Uh, the black guy bought a house. The white guy bought like a house. The uh, the, the 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 like newspaper like article on both of them couldn't be like anything like different. One of them yeah. was portrayed as flashy. The black guy, the white guy was portrayed as oh fine, you know, good on you for doing very well <laughs> and buying yourself a house. But me, the guy, black guy was being criticized, you know, for yeah. buying a yeah. house, you know, uh, for himself so and for his mom as well. So I That's think right. that is how, um, like the like the media. So that painting is a protest to the UK system, to the media, the way that like they treat um, like people. So I'm, black, I'm getting people, I'm people. getting this message here that this is the power that artists we have. And Shaman, I want you to come in here. How we are able to address societal issues using our art? You know, how do we as artists communicate in such a way that we are able to address? issues in our society and i will i will talk about where we live so regardless of where we are in the world we are able to address issues that are going on around us through our paintings 
How do you, as Shalman, communicate that in your artworks? Uh, yeah, the line uh, broke a bit, but then I think the question is uh, how do how do we address the pro the problems going on uh, in our society uh, using our art um, towards our race? Is that right? Yes, using yeah. using the paintings yeah, that we do. I think again, um, I believe. <laughs> yeah, I believe. Um, we as artists or have got a big role to play in terms of okay. uh, in terms of uh, showing the world uh, what showing the world what's going on because yeah. uh, I, as as you said pictures say a thousand words that's right I have believed you I believe everybody knows that so yeah so um, we as artists I think. Our ability to tell the uh, to show the world and tell the world what is going on and how the problems can be solved is really it's, it's, it, it, it's a strong tool that we have because um, very strong tool uh, because words can only say so much. Yes, words can only say so much. But then with art, it that is painting is is a language that can be spoken by anyone. That's true. So that's true. That that's a very powerful to, point. To reach, you know, painting, to reach painting, and people. Yes, and this is something that I normally yeah. do. When you say something that's so powerful, I just repeat it so that people know. Uh, Shaman just said, "Painting is a language that everybody can speak." You know, you don't need to learn a painting; you can just yeah. speak it, and people get the message. So that's powerful. Carry on. Yeah. So, um, so we as artists have got that responsibility to uh, to tell the world what's going on and and even come out with solutions to towards the problem. That's right. You know. So um, again, again, if you if you know some of the British artists, I believe you've heard of Bansky. Yeah, Bansky. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He he does a good. He does he does well. In telling people stories on the walls, in, that's in, right. In, in the city of London, in the yeah. city of London. So Shaman is talking about Bansky. You know, yes, I mean, I mean, his his painting yeah, on one of the trains. Yeah, he normally uses graffiti, yeah. and and it sells for th hundreds of thousands of, of pounds. Graffiti. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, uh, so, so with that tool in our hands, I think, I think we have it. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I'm going to bring, I'm going to bring Richard back in, and Richard's question is changing the, the mentality of people, especially towards we as Africans. Yes, some of the issues. That's true. That's true. So, Shaman has answered this very, very brilliantly. We as Africans should speak through our creativity. Um, as artists in Africa, whatever injustice is going on in our continent of Africa, as artists, we must be able to communicate. Let's say if there's corruption going on, do a painting that speaks against corruption. If there's child labor, do a painting or any creative thing that speaks against child labor. Um, a painting or a picture speaks a thousand words. So we can use our creativity to address governmental issues. And this is what I encourage artists to embark on. And mine, I'm going to show one of my paintings. I did this when um, the George Floyd issue happened. And I'm going to just put it on screen. The one in the middle is my rendition of the George Floyd one, where I talked about the American flag bleeding. You have a lot of blood on their hands. I listed the names of everyone who had died in this process of police brutality. And I've got certain representations of, of, of them, each one of them. And then at the bottom, you've got the act of the policeman kneeling on the neck of George Floyd. You've got uh, other people, you know, where it started, I can't breathe. It was this gentleman that first, the one on the right hand side that first uttered those words. So as artists, we are able to address issues using our paintings. And if we are able to just open our eyes wider, 
we will be able to communicate um, injustices in the system and then hone in on the government, call on the government using these paintings to address the issues. In like manner, we'll be able to affect decision making. We will not just be looking for money for our art pieces, but we'll be making contributions to our society. And this is what has been done back in the in the days. All their pay or most of their paintings addressed issues in their system. So, guys, I thank you so much. There's one more painting that I'd like to show from Richard, and then we'll bring the program to a close. And I'd like both of you to advise um the youth of today with regards to the art career. But let's talk about this one first. So this one, Richard, can you quickly just summarize both of them for us? All right. Um, uh, can you hear me, Senior Eric? We can, yes. All right, okay. So the first one is the Yes on Tour painting, or Yes on Tour wall painting. Um, also, like, refer to uh, some the Godins to uh, um, like war. So this is um, the, the the whole idea behind this um, painting is just, just telling the African story. I uh, that's story. I was looking for something um, to really uh, like look through. Well, I, I do quite like a lot of like I said before. I I I I I, I paint like any uh, like of my pieces. So I was okay. looking for. Um, like, you know, like a story uplifting, uh, uplifting, like stuff can be painted, or uh, to see if it has ever been painted, um, in the way that I've, I've wanted. And I find the story of um, Yasanto to be fascinating, and I think it should be, you know, be taught, uh, like her courage, her, her leadership, and everything should be taught, you know, like in school. But one thing that like I came across is that it's like there wasn't so many paintings of actually her paint or of yeah. Yasantua, like you know, like depicting you know, like that carriage. I think most um, of I, I think uh, like most Indians will be familiar with the pose of Yasantua holding the like rifle, but like nothing else, you know. But I said no, we we need something to really capture what actually happened you know um, like during that um war or during that, era. that um, protest you know that uh, like era so i composed this painting based on um this um french um like artist um eugene delacroix uh, some, oh, yes. uh, like painting. so it is very very similar um an idea and i read a lot and i researched quite a lot about like this painting to make sure that I get the references right. So within the background, you see um, the old major painting, which was banned by the British. You know, like if you don't really know, if you like, you really wouldn't know that. So that there yes. is, um, there was a major palette that was burned down before uh, the new one, uh, the country one that like we can all see. So that one is referenced like in the background. It is, it is, it, it is uh, uh, within the background. Then you could see uh, the Godins too as well. Um, That's right. Um, being referenced within the painting as well. Then we've got the Ashanti flag as well, like in the background, because the reason that, because a lot of people ask me, so is there a Jamaican flag or why don't we have um, <laughs> like a Ghanaian flag? And I said that um, Ghana, you know, like we didn't have Ghana um, uh, at the time. We had yes. Gold Coast. That's right. And uh, Ashanti didn't want to be part of the Gold Coast, like at, at the time. So um, yes. if you want to represent, and what actually happened in the war, then it is likely that you may have seen or there would have been an Ashanti flag rather than the yeah. Gold Coast flag <laughs> there um, at the time. So that is why, you know, like, and you've got oh, um, like the British uh, um, so just uh, like within the background and, you know, like you could see some of our uh, like the, the like the war dresses um, that like, you know, uh, like we wore, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, like we use uh, like in battle. The Ashantis like used like have on um during um, um battle so again like you could see that as well so I think this one is just capturing the moment during that uh, going to war you know the British like right. requesting for the goodies to and as yes and to you know like standing up to say no like we're not going to you know 
uh, give it to you. If the men are not yeah. going to fight, then we, the women, we will, you know, like rise up and lead uh, that battle. So it is a tribute to her courage, to her strength, to her leadership. That is that's what the painting. And do you know what? I want this painting to be taught in every school like in Ghana. Uh, Definitely. <laughs> um, I'll Definitely. I'll be very, very sad to see this painting not bought by Ghanaian, but bought by someone else. Because I would mm. want this painting to be in Ghana, not in anywhere. But very well I mean, said. It's, it's, very well it's, said. It's likely that it may not be bought. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, let's come back. I think. I think, I think. I think we need to do more in just um, educating our, our people, and by our people, I mean Africans and Ghanaians, to yeah. appreciate the art pieces that we produce, because that is by appreciation that they will be buying all these pieces. Yeah. So definitely, yeah. yes, we'll do. We'll do the homework. And we'll communicate this a bit more in our society. So with regards to the one on the right hand side, can you tell us a bit more about the one on the right hand side? I think Richard, Richard has fallen off, but Richard, let me know if you can hear me. Okay, so I'll go back to Shalman, and then Shalman will talk about the our uh, society. So Shalman, can you advise us a bit more about the younger generation and what we can do to encourage them to come into the art world? Um. First of all, I hope they don't go through what we through when we started. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, we, when when our parents didn't did uh, approve of our decisions, we took. Yes. <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, but saying that, I think if they see, but if they see, if we have again, we have a lot of a lot of uh, rules. We need to show the show the up and coming that. It's a it's a profession worth taking. It's a that's right. It's, it's, it's um if you've got a grip, yeah. So we have we have a lot to show them in terms of uh, in terms of um, exhibiting around the world, showing our work uh, on uh, uh, and on 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 different platforms, uh, galleries, different countries. So we we need to we need to show them. That, that is possible, possible isn't it's possible. it? It's possible. It's yes. possible to make a career out of it. That's right. You see, so, and uh, what I would say is that, yeah, yeah. So, um, and then another thing that I need to, yeah, it's possible to make a career out of, out of it. And then people think about art as, um, as, as the only way to, the only way to uh, leave off art is just by painting on canvas. Mm. It's really not true. There is so That's many true. different forms of art that we don't consider. Now, let me let me pause you there. There's a question I by our senior so Albert Uswanza. I mean, imagine, just imagine. Yeah, there's a lot. There, there's a um, question on screen that I'd like you to pick up. Like, yeah. Yeah. So he says that by art, many indigenous people think that it's only about drawing. Can the panel highlight the other accepted art forms of art? And that's what you were talking about, isn't it? People think just painting on a canvas is is is, is the only form of art. So if you can elaborate more, that there are so many other forms of art. Exactly. Yes. yes. There are so many other forms of art. I I personally think of art as a form of expression, uh, expressing yourself. Okay. You understand? It can be true. It can be true. Uh, true. True. Um, painting, drawing. To think, to think of the performing arts. Yes. Uh, music and all. But let, if come to if you come to visual art as 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 we are. There is, it's not just limited to the canvas. So That's the right. question is, who, uh, who, who do the who think about it? Who do the painting?
meetings on the skating boards. Yes. Understand? Who, who actually do the paintings on the skating boards? So who do who come out with the designs, the, the designs on on some of these big big buildings we see around the world? That's right. Um, you know, um, and then who are the, who, uh, who are in charge? Who are in charge of of yeah? Who are in, who who are in charge of all those murals and beautiful sculptures we see in big big cities? Yes. They are all done by artists. That's right. That's right. So it's not just the canvas. Can you hear it's me? It's not just the canvas. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? We can, yes. So Shaman was saying Hello? Can that you hear it's me? not just... Yes, we can. Yes. We can hear you. Shaman was saying that it's not just yeah, the canvas yeah, okay, okay. that we can use yeah, to create. So as I was saying, that, yeah, as I was saying, there's so many ways. There's so many ways to uh, to, uh, to to come out with uh, to to come out with. Um... Uh, yeah, so as I was saying. Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear? Yes, we can. can we can. Please continue. Continue. Can you hear me? Yes. Please continue. Can you hear me, Eric? Yes. Yeah, there's, there's so many. Books. Excellent. So, 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 there's so many forms of of art. Excellent, thank you. There's so many form, forms of art we can uh, we can encourage people to come up. Now there's something very common now going around called digital art. That's right. So digital art when has now to, become something that's new, to, uh, and everybody is getting involved in that. Called art. Yes. It's not really different from from what we do as traditional painters. Guys, I'm going to have to call Shaman again because I really still, want to hear what he's saying. You still need to leave. Shaman, hold on a minute. I'm going to call you on the phone for you to tell us. Yeah, Shaman. Great. So current digital art, digital art has now become the norm of the day, isn't it? That's right. That's correct. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's true. That's true. All from artists. That's very well true. Yes. Yes. We can hear you, yes. We have to go through the process of, of, uh, of traditional arts. Yes. And then they have to learn the basics of, of, of computers as well. That's right. Because, because it's become the new norm, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So what happened is that when you combine the two, you have to learn the basics of computers. 
That's true. Very well true. Because, because personally, I've done a lot of digital artwork. Okay. I've done illustrations. Okay. On the, uh, in Photoshop. That's true. That's and true. The only, the only reason why I do it because I know how to do Photoshop. Yes. And therefore, you're able to transfer your, your skills onto the and computer. That skill is very valuable to me. Mm. Book illustrators. Yes. I did not have to do it. Illustration is me. They're all artists. They're all artists. Yeah, all artists. So, so that, a lot of I think we need people. We need to start educating people on what, what, uh, what, what is possible as an artist. That's right. There, because there's a question. Because not, I believe for a nation to develop, yes, you need artists as well. Definitely. You need artists. Very well said. You cannot do without artists as a nation no. because we, even no. when it comes no. to when it comes to even infrastructural development, it is the artists no. that create the impression, isn't it? The artist impression. Yes, you need an artist impression, and that is where three D art comes in. That's correct. Where you have softwares like, um, uh, 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 like obviously Illustrator. Yes. And, uh, and yes. then you have, um, uh, you have softwares like Maya. Maya comes in, Inventor, all those, all uh, these three D softwares. Cinema 4D. That's it. And all these tools. Yes. So that is, but if you know those tools and you are not an artist. It's impossible for you to really use them. That's right. That's right. So, so we need artists to move on and develop as a nation. Yes. So, so, so there's so many fields I can go on forever. <laughs> you know, be, 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 because of time, I think we will just round this off in that. But I like your encouragement with to the youth that says that it's not only painting on canvas that is art. There's so no, many more, no. and in these days. Uh, digital art has even become has more prominent. Has opened a wider, it has become even wider. Even wider, even wider. No, yeah. very, very well said. I'll be, I'll be. There's a question by my my mentor, someone I look up to really well, um, the genius Larry Otu, and he's saying that why do you think that people collect paintings a lot instead of drawings? That's a really good question from a good old artist, someone we all look up to in Ghana. Larry Otu. So, uh, oh, Larry, I've met Larry years back, but yeah. I don't think you remember. Young boy at the East Studio, which is Stretch Campus. I bet he does. I bet he does. Yeah, so, um, so, do, do you um, want to answer this, this question? And I'll move on to Richard to also share his thoughts. Okay, yeah. Um, I think in terms of uh, painting is the durability. Okay. Because paintings last for hundreds and hundreds of years. Yes. With, with drawing, I think drawing on, especially on paper. Yes. Um, yeah, the, uh, the lifespan of that, of, of, the, of paper, can be short unless it's really, really kept. That's true. That's true. Well, That's true. Restricted. Yes. You know, but then when it comes to, um, when it comes to canvas, it's way more than pain, I believe it's got a, a, a longer lifespan. And That's then true. there's something also about colors. I, I might not be right, but I'm, I believe when it comes to a painter, a painter, they have, they have, they, they have another medium drawing to express themselves, which is paint. I, I agree. I agree with you on this one because a lot of people are attracted to color rather than just exactly. black and white. So color all around us. that's it. So we, we yeah. naturally follow color rather than just sketches or black and white drawings. Yes. So I think I that's one of the things. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to bring Richard in into the conversation um to answer this question as well. Uh thank you so much, Shalman. We'll catch up on thank screen you. again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, great. So Richard, same question goes to you. Why do you think that people collect Paintings instead of drawings. Paintings a lot instead of I think, drawings. Um, this is, yeah, um, this is this is quite um, a difficult question um, because <laughs> you are getting into the mind of collectors here. And um, yeah. yeah, thank you very much, Larry, for um, this question. Um, you are an inspiration to many artists in Ghana. So Larry is an inspiration. That's, um, we all look up to him. I mean. Uh, he's, he's, yeah, he's raised the bar that's, already. That's that's quite it. Like a, exactly, like a difficult question coming from the master. 
and I believe that the master <laughs> really um, has got the answers, uh, like the answer to this question. But I will, I will just take it from my own like perspective, and and I think that someone did um, uh, mention like some of them that um, the, the, like drawings and paintings are uh, um, you know like different anyway, and. Uh, it, it really depends, like, on collectors. But I think that the reason why most collectors will go for paintings rather than, like, drawings is that um, paintings have been known to increase, you know, it, like, the value, value, like, increases quite a lot. That's right. Um, that is, like, if you go to the art, like, market, um, the art world, um, painting, the values, uh, you know, like, the value um, of paintings do go up significantly than drawings. You can get some drawings which are very, very expensive. Um, which are very rare as well and yeah. um, you, you know but I think for like most of the time paintings do go um, uh, up, um, up um, like in value most arts, uh, most art collectors see their um, um, collecting as investment anyway so they invest right. not for now but for like the long term so they are looking at um, a medium which would have some longevity as well so yeah. like if you go um drawings most of the time it is very difficult to preserve yeah. <laughs> most most yeah. most drawings are done on paper yes um, and it is very very difficult to preserve it is affected by moisture lights it fades whereas uh, paintings do really take it can like withstand quite a lot and you can even protect it with varnish and other you know That's things right. to Keep it going for prolong the lifespan of it. Yes. Whilst I don't yeah. think, yeah, with um, like drawings, it is very difficult to really do um, the same. Um, so I think that right. that that is my take. But I think it's quite um, like a difficult question <laughs> to answer. But hey, it's coming from it's coming from our own maestro. So definitely, we'll yeah, take that question. Yeah, that's right. Because yeah, I, I think what I think what is important is that I think depending on the that that. That a painting. So it depends on who actually draws it as well. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. But guys, I'm gonna to have to round up the program. But I'm so glad that you made it possible for us to have this program. I think we need to schedule another one and make sure that our internet connections are great. But today, today has been fantastic. I really appreciate all of you coming on and definitely we'll catch up in the in the background. But thank you so, so much. It has been Richard Mensa and Shalman Kwashi uh, being with me as my guest for today. So thank you guys. I really respect the work that you do as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great, thank, thank you. you. And you, God bless thank you. you. Great, so guys, it has been Richard Mensa and Shalman who joined us today. Um, on our show today. Now, today has been wonderful, and I thank all of you who joined us to contribute. And I've got Charles, who says, great work, Mr. Amwaka Bodhi. Thank you so much, Charles. Thank you for joining us tonight. And then um, our own maestro, Larry Otu, says, thank you, guys. You answered the question really well. <laughs> thank you, sir. We thank you that you have actually appreciated our answer to you as well. God bless you so, so much. Um, before I sign off, I want all of you to join me next week as I bring another guest your way, talking all about African art, African art, African art. Because if we don't tell our story, who will tell our story? So thank you so much, guys. And thank you for watching. I will see you at 4 p.m. next week. God bless you. Thank you.